away the sins of the world. And so this is your token reminder. Uh, take that with you. There's plenty. If you have someone at home you'd like to take one to, uh, you're welcome to, to pick one up for them as, as well. Uh, also, a uh, word of instruction, if, uh, if some of you who are not follically challenged like myself, uh, when it comes to the point of doing the uh, imposition of the ashes on your forehead, uh, it would help me uh, not to make a mess of your hair if, if you would just simply lift up your, your bangs uh, or move them out of the way so that uh, I don't accidentally get you smothered with, uh, with ashes. Uh, and so uh, at the point of imposition, you'll receive the ashes uh, in the sign of a cross on your forehead. Uh, the ashes uh, are uh, just, these are, these are the freshest ashes we've ever had. Uh, I just burned the palm leaves uh, from last year's Palm Sunday this afternoon. So, uh, uh, so they're, they're good and ready to go. Uh, but if you could, if you have bangs, just kind of lift them up. Some of us, that's not so hard. Uh, but if you could you do that, we'd appreciate that. All right. Uh, and then, uh, announcement-wise, I want to let you know about Holy Week services that are coming up. On uh, March 24th will be Palm Sunday. On, uh, on Monday, Thursday, which is the 28th of that week, uh, we are going to be sharing an event with First Baptist Church and some of the other churches in town we're going to go down to First Baptist Church on Monday, Thursday for a Seder meal uh, that is being led by the Jews for Jesus. Uh, and so these are persons who would understand and know what the Passover meal and the symbolism is all about, and they're going to help teach us uh, about all the various things that went on that night that took place in the upper room, which took place on the Thursday of Holy Week. Uh, and what was this meal that... Uh, that they took and what did it mean, the different elements and the symbolism of it, that this is the meal that Jesus took and, and reconstituted, if you will, uh, by instituting the, the, the Lord's Supper. And so we're going to learn history in it, but also in it find Christ as he points us uh, to the cross and to the resurrection. So uh, I hope that you will make plans to, to join us as we go over to First Baptist on Monday, Thursday. Good Friday, we'll be back over here. It'll be in the sanctuary. And it will be, uh, it will be a, a beautiful presentation of a Tenebrae service by our chancel choir. Tenebrae is a, is a service of darkness. Uh, Good Friday uh, commemorates Christ's death on the cross. Uh, it is a sober uh, experience, a sobering, I should say, uh, experience, in that uh, it really seeks to put us in touch uh, with the sufferings and uh, uh, death of Jesus Christ. And it uh, will, uh, it's a solemn occasion. And so I really want to encourage you to, to be here for that uh, in, in, so that on Easter it means that much more that Christ rose from the dead. So uh, those, are the, uh, those are the services of Holy Week. And of course, we end that with, uh, with, with uh, Easter that following Sunday. Okay. Uh, that's all the announcements I have for right now. At this time, I invite you to stand and join with me in our uh, call to worship. It's based on Joel chapter 2 and Psalm 51. If you would stand, you'll find it uh, your part on, the, on the, uh, the, the, the screens as well as my part. Repent and turn to the Lord with all of your heart. The Lord our God is full of grace and mercy, slow to anger and overflowing with loving kindness. Turn to him with compassion and prayer. The Lord our God works justice for the poor and hears the cries of those in need. Turn to him with obedience and generosity. Repent and turn to the Lord, for his day is coming and is near. Create in us clean hearts, O God and renew our spirits for the day of your salvation. If you'll please remain standing as we sing, Jesus, keep me near the cross. Jesus,
you please remain standing and bow your heads with me as I pray? Merciful Father, you are ever patient and full of compassion toward your children. Send your Holy Spirit to draw our hearts to you so that we may be cleansed of our sins and reconciled to you in Christ. Our lives are momentary, but your kingdom is eternal. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our scripture lesson comes from 2 Corinthians 5.20 through 6.10. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. As God's partners, we beg you not to accept this marvel with this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. For God says, at just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. We live in such a way that no one will stumble because of us and no one will find fault with our ministry. In everything we do, we show that we are true ministers of God. We patiently endure troubles and hardships and calamities of every kind. We have been beaten, been put in prison, faced angry mobs, worked to exhaustion, endured sleepless nights, and gone without food. We prove ourselves by our purity, our understanding, our patience, our kindness, by the Holy Spirit within us, and by our sincere love. We faithfully preach the truth. God's power is working in us. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand for attack and the left hand for defense. We serve God when, whether people honor us or despise us, whether they slander us or praise us. We are honest, but they call us imposters. We are ignored even though we are well known. We live close to death, but we are still alive. We have been beaten, but we have not been killed. Our hearts ache, but we always have joy. We are poor, but we give spiritual riches to others. We own nothing, and yet we have everything. Please remain seated and join with me as we sing the gift of love. Though I may speak For the gospel reading, Matthew 6, 1 through 6, and 16 through 21. Watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. 
I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on the street corners and in the synagogues, where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. And when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do. For they try to look miserable and disheveled, so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face. Then no one, then no one will notice that you are fasting except your Father, who knows what you do in private. And your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Where your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. And you may be seated. Thank you, girls. Y'all can head on down if you want. I think they did a wonderful job. What about you? invite you to uh, uh, pray with me just for a moment. We're going to have a reflection, uh, sort of a devotional, if you will, and, and uh, I'm just going to ask God to prepare our hearts to hear from him this evening. Gracious Lord, that's exactly what I pray, that you would open our hearts to hear the message you have for us this evening. Father, speak to us directly through your spirit, uh, through your word, uh, through this reflection, through the music, through the receiving of the ashes, through the reminder of your spirit of our call to be the people you've called us to be. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. How many of y'all uh, have been hiking before? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of y'all like hiking? Raise your hand. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, those that went, you, you, most of you, for the most part, like hiking, you know. Uh, I enjoy hiking. It's always been a lot of fun. And uh, um, it's always something that, uh, you know, just getting out in nature and, and seeing God's creation and, and enjoying uh, those sorts of things, you know, following the trail, uh, getting to your, your destination. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's not just necessarily the, the, the getting there uh, that is important, although it can be, because sometimes it gets you to a beautiful vista or, or scene or anything like that. But, but much of hiking is, is learning to enjoy the journey. It's learning to take in what you're experiencing along the way. And sometimes that involves uh, a little sweat, <laughs> if it's an arduous hike. Uh, sometimes that might involve a skin knee here and there, if, uh, if uh, maybe you stumble here and there. And, uh, and sometimes uh, it, it's, 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 uh, it's just uh, making sure you're keeping your eyes uh, on the prize, you know, in, in some ways. Just make sure you're keeping one step in front of the other and moving forward in the direction that you know uh, you're intended to go. But every hike uh, has with it uh, a beginning. And the beginning they call a trailhead. Uh, and Lent is the hiking trail, and Ash Wednesday is the trailhead. And so tonight, we begin a, a journey together uh, to start here, but to make our way uh, up the hills and down the hills and following the trail and over the bridges and, and maybe even stumble along the way and maybe get sweaty and maybe get tired. And, uh, but eventually, we find ourselves uh, at this beautiful place uh, that we call Easter. And so tonight's an invitation. Tonight's an invitation to put both your hiking boots uh, on, the, on the start of the trailhead and, and to make your first steps as you move forward uh, in faith during this, this Lenten journey. Ash Wednesday is that trailhead of a spiritual journey. And like Moses ascending Mount Sinai, we embark on a 40-day trek not for stone tablets, but rather for a, a renewed heart. 
But why do we embark on this journey of all, at all? Why, why do we mark our, our forehead with ashes? Why consider our own mortality and need for redemption? Why do we give up things that, for Lent? Well, our scriptures that were read to us today, wonderfully, uh, uh, by uh, Maya and Lila, uh, uh, illuminate uh, and elaborate on the answers to these questions. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul paints a vivid picture of our dual reality, that, that we are existing in a decaying earthly tent, while at the same time yearning for an in, in, eternal uh, heavenly dwelling. He implores us to become ambassadors of reconciliation, that, that our time here on earth is to make a difference in the lives and relationships that we have with others. This is something that requires a, a sacrifice on our part. It demands the setting aside of our earthly distractions, our petty grievances, and focusing on a, a message of, of love and, and forgiveness, of grace and mercy that we're called to share with others. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, Jesus instructs us on true righteousness, emphasizing that outward acts of piety hold no value unless they are rooted in a genuine devotion to God. He urges us to practice prayer and, and giving and fasting, not so that we might receive the applause of crowds or the acknowledgement of others or a, a slap on the back or someone giving us kudos, but rather for we do them for God. This is not about depriving ourselves for show, but for creating space for a, a deeper connection with God. That's what Lent is all about. The things that we give up, the things that we let go of, the, the, the forgiveness that we offer, the, the grace that we extend, the, the ways that we serve others, these are all ways uh, that, we, that we in this life deepen our connection with God. And it is something that is done free from the allure of earthly validation. We don't do this so that other people can see what we're, we're doing we do this for God. So why do we give things up for Lent? Well, it's not simply for, about depriving ourselves of chocolate or alcohol or social media. It's about creating space in our hearts and our minds, clearing away the clutter that obscures the divine presence. Our, our drives and our desires and, and these things that we find difficult to let go of in our lives, uh, we don't realize what kind of influence they have on us until we let them go. And by simply seeing that draw, that, that power that they have in our lives, we realize, wow, there are many things in our lives that are distracting us and pulling us away from God who are clamoring for attention in our lives, jockeying for position in our lives. And maybe there's not just one thing we need to give up. Maybe there's others. It's about saying no to the fleeting pleasures of this world and saying yes to the enduring joy of knowing God more deeply in our lives. This season of sacrifice is not an end in of itself. It's a preparation, a training ground, if you will, for the ultimate celebration, which is Easter itself. By letting go of the inessentials in our lives, we create fertile soil for the seeds of faith to blossom. Through prayer, through reflection, and or acts of service, we become more receptive to the transforming power of Christ's resurrection in our lives. Lent is a season that prepares the soil of our hearts to receive a beautiful uh, bloom in, in, the, in the coming of Easter. That's one of the things I love about Easter lilies, you know. They, 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 they pop up at, the, at the, the craziest times of the year. You don't always expect them, but, but boom, there they are. Well, that's kind of what Lent is and what Easter becomes for us is, is suddenly we're surprised by, by this joy. We're surprised by this grace. We're surprised by this love that conquers death and sin and its consequence. Lent is not just about giving, other, giving up things. It's about taking on something greater. During this 
journey of Lent, we take on the mantle of Christ's love, which, overla- which overlapping this year with Valentine's Day is just absolutely perfect. Because it reminds us that our responsibility to be agents of love and reconciliation in the world is something that this world desperately seeks and needs. It's filled with all the other stuff. It's filled with all the negativity. It's filled with all of the the critical nature. It's filled with all of the the, uh, uh, shameful acts. It's filled with all kinds of of stuff that pulls people down and tears people away and, 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 and puts people in knots. But when we take upon ourselves that mantle of love, not a mushy kind of, perverted love, sexualized love that this world has come to know love as, but rather a love that's more like agape, a love that sacrifices for another, a love that gives for the sake of others and not for oneself, a a love that is a brotherly love, a love that is a familiar family kind of love, a love that that extends itself in ways that, that this world is longing for but lost to find at times. This Lenten journey is fitting that it is on Valentine's Day where it begins because it reminds us of our responsibility to be agents of love and reconciliation in a world that is desperately seeking love. This Lenten journey with its intentional sacrifices prepares us to experience Easter not just as a, as a historical event, but rather as a, as a personal renewal in our lives. And as we walk down this path together, let us hold each other in accountability, offering one another courage along the way when we get tired or sweaty or we skin our knee along the way, or maybe mess up on things, may we come alongside of one another and offer words of encouragement. You've got this. It's just a little bit further. I'm here with you. I won't leave your side. Let's let's hike this road, this path together, and emerge from the darkness of Lent, transformed by the radiant light of Easter. May this be a season of a deepening faith for us. May we take our faith seriously. May we take our attendance upon the the things of faith seriously. Worship, communion, prayer, scripture reading, fasting. And may this season be one where our faith is deepened, uh, where we experience a genuine, not only spirit, but experience of service and a joyful anticipation as we prepare to celebrate the greatest victory of all, the victory over sin and death through Christ alone. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. This time I invite you to... uh, Hear the invitation to the Lenten discipline. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Lent is a 40-day season of preparation and a reflection leading to Easter Sunday when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Lenten practice has unfolded over Christian history, largely focusing on individuals preparing for entrance into the church. These individuals, or catechumens as they are called, would engage in a season of learning and preparation for baptism on Easter when they would make public profession of their faith in Jesus Christ. Over the centuries, Lent became recognized as a time to engage the whole church in repentance and self-examination, to realign ourselves in personal and social holiness with the vows made, with the vows made at our baptism. Lent invites us to slow down and to take time to intentionally pray the words of David in Psalm 51. Say them with me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. As we prepare for the Lenten season, we recognize that our life is fleeting. It is dust and ashes compared to the eternal kingdom of God. We must set our minds on what is everlasting and turn away from anything that leads to death. God is inviting us to repent and turn back to him. Let us pray. 
Holy God, we acknowledge that we have not been the people you created us to be. We have turned away from you and have followed our way. We come before you now asking for healing, forgiveness, and reconciliation. And may we all now join together as we confess together. We have not loved our neighbors with Christ-like love. We have not listened to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We have used our words to hurt rather than build up those around us. We have not lived with generous hearts towards the poor and the needy. We have worshiped and trusted idols of our own making, power, success, and wealth. We have done things in secret against your will for us. Our sin is apparent before us, O Lord, and your judgments are true. Merciful God, we long to be in your presence. Make us holy as you are holy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. This time I invite you in the silence of your own heart to make a confession unto the Lord of those things that you need to confess in the silence of your heart. Amen. Cleanse us, Lord, and wash us of our sins. Create in us clean hearts, and we will declare your praise. Teach us wisdom through your word and Holy Spirit. Renew our spirits, and we will freely serve you. Restore to us the simple joy of holiness in heart and life. Sustain in us willing spirits to preserve in obedience. have in my hand the ashes that I mentioned were, were uh, burned just this very day. The ashes that come from the palm leaves that were waved by the children last Palm Sunday. Our world comes back around to us again and we experience even in this death a new life that comes at Easter. Let us pray over these ashes. Everlasting God, we are reminded this day that the things of this world amount to dust and ashes in light of your kingdom. We were created from the dust of this earth and we long for a new heaven and a new earth where death and decay will be no more. We now ask that you send your Holy Spirit upon us in these ashes. Use them to remind us of the grace poured out at our baptism and our identity as your children. Teach us to set our hearts on heavenly, imperishable things and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. In the words of remembrance, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. This time you are invited to come forward. Uh, the choir is going to lead us. I invite you all to go ahead and make your way down. They're going to come down the center aisle. You'll receive the ashes from down front. There's one line. Uh, you can grab the coin yourself from the, from the offering plate. Uh, and remember, if you could, to to lift your, uh, your hair so that I can get to your forehead. So uh, after the choir comes and you can follow their lead and come as the Lord leads you.
Throughout this Lenten journey, our ashes will remain with us on the altar uh, as a reminder of the journey that we are on and the direction that we are heading. Receive now this assurance and pardon. Our God is full of mercy and grace. A broken and repentant heart he will not turn away. Through your confession of sin and his unending mercy, may you be delivered from guilt and experience restoration once again this Lenten season. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Let us pray together the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This time I will dismiss you with, uh, with a benediction. And after I do, I invite you to offer signs of peace and reconciliation and love to one another before you dismiss. Let us stand together to receive this benediction. Now may God's love be poured into your hearts during the season of Advent in such a way that you are drawn closer to God, even through confession, even through forgiveness, even through sacrifice and fasting. That in that time on this journey down this path, when it goes uphill and downhill and around a bend, we may not yet see around whether we stumble or whether we sweat. May it be done in the love of Christ so that Christ's love may be made real in us as we reach Easter. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all join together in saying, Amen. go in peace.